guys and welcome back to the channel today we are going to be showing you two ways yes you heard that correctly two ways that you can make delta 11 thc which is becoming very prevalent in the market right now in your laboratory both methods are appropriate and doable also make sure that you stick around to the end because we will be showing you how to make delta 11 thc at the end using nothing more than your body that's right your body your own anatomical biosynthetical laboratory system that you are piloting around on this earth got quite a bit to cover today guys so without any further ado let us go ahead and dive right on in to the content boy i love that Yes, 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 you already know. Go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, bell button, notification. Why? Because I heard that you are a great and generous person, and it is my favorite thing about you. What do you guys think about the beard? I'm working on the beard. My wife wants me to grow a beard, so I'm growing a beard. How to make Delta 11 THC. I am Grim from WKU Consulting. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to need to make sure that we have, as far as equipment goes, is a reactionary vessel capable of high pressures like the one shown here we need this reactor to be able to handle about 1000 psi safely don't get freaked out just yet yes they do make them yes it is possible we will also need an auxiliary heating unit attached to it that will carry us to 240 degrees fahrenheit with ease now besides that in our laboratory unless we are sourcing um, our oil and other things, you know, from a third party um, person or provider, manufacturer. We will also need a centrifuge or our LPG system, other um, extraction systems that we probably already have in place, a rotary evaporator, solvent recovery systems, other things that will probably get us where we need to be because we probably have those things already. Now, step number one, we need to extract our cannabis material using ethanol and then filter all of our plant material and recover our solvent so that we are left with a nice, pure, crude oil. Don't worry too much about, too much about the winterization at this step, guys. Those nucleopeptides are going to help us further down the road. Now, one thing that we are going to want to make sure that we have is a nice, collection of some keef or pollen depending on where you're at in the world the best way to do this is to use a vibrating screen with some fresh frozen you can do this with normal buds but if you use fresh frozen then you get a lot more of those trichomes off a lot cleaner and easier than just dumping out your grinder although in a pinch i suppose that would work as well this optimal setup will have to be about 5% keef to crude ratio. So if I have one liter of crude oil, I would like approximately 50 grams of keef per every one liter. Now, that is time to place our, okay, sorry, sorry, first. First thing that we want to do is we want to mix our keef into our one liter of crude oil. It helps if we warm this crude oil up just a little bit before we get started. The next thing that we're going to want to do is after we have mixed that together, we will go ahead and load up our reactor. We're going to mix it inside of the reactor and we're gonna go ahead and start this off at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit in our heater. We will bring that up to temp in a minute. Then we want to go ahead and use our stir motor to begin to stir everything at about 400 RPM. So we've got our mixture inside of our pressure reactor. Everything is up to par, ready to go. We've got our heater coming on and our stir motor is running at about 400 RPMs. Now, once we get all of that together, we will, and all of that is, is in there, everything is clean, we will start to ramp up by 10 degrees until we get to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, as far as pressurizing, we are going to use high pressure CO2 because we want to boost the internal pressure of our pressure reactor here to about 700 
PSI. We are going to be using the charging rail and the gauge to make sure to not overpressurize our machine as it is only rated for about 1000 PSI as it is. Now, once all the parameters have been met, we will let it stay in these conditions for approximately 60 minutes, give or take a minute or two. Our CO2 will then need to be released slowly into the ventilation shaft. So naturally, this would be under a ventilation shaft or our charging rail here. We can go ahead and run a high pressure tube is going to need a high pressure hose is going to need. But we don't want to just go ahead and off gas this into the atmosphere, although there isn't necessarily any Mm, let's see, dangerous substances that would be venting to your atmosphere. It is always a very good laboratory practice to make sure that you are venting out to a ventilation system. We're not going to just crack this valve all the way open, but we are going to allow it to slowly bleed itself out back down to, to, to pressure, uh, to atmospheric pressure, and then we will go ahead and turn off our heating unit to make sure that everything works up to room temperature. So CO2 will be released slowly into the ventilation shaft and all of this uh, temperature controller and everything will be shut off. Now I do want the oil to still be a little warm when I move into the next step. This is because we will still have some plant material present that we added from the pollen and we want to filter this through something like a drain droid at a 2.5 micron screen to make sure we do not send any particulate down the stream. So we want to be able to uh, use our vacuum filtration system to force that still um, very well, pretty warm oil down through, down through that filtration screen to catch any of that pollen because what we've needed the pollen for has already transpired in the reactionary system. Once we are ready to do that, we are ready to disconnect all of our systems, making sure that our uh, pressure gauge here is at zero degrees Celsius because we do not want to start to open any lids or anything without that. We should be able to have everything open to make sure that we are not pressurizing because we don't want anything to fly off and hit us in the face. Once we do that, we are ready to move to our favorite distillation system and just go ahead and distill under normal operating conditions. Once we have collected our main body, we'll have three separate fractions, heads, main body, and tails. We can either reintroduce some terpenes for vape carts, or we can mix it with a diluent that will allow us to pull it into a syringe for sublingual use. This is reaction number one. This is how we perform reaction number one. And for all the people that don't want to do that, here you go again, you have your CO2, 700 PSI, 400 RPMs, 240 degrees uh, auxiliary chiller, in, out, everything is moving according to plan. Now, the next thing that we can do that will help us do it with everyday uh, kind of stuff that we have around the laboratory is going to sound crazy, but is absolutely plausible. Step number two will help us do it with nothing more than our everyday multi-necked boiling flask, mantle stir bar, etc. If you are used to making THCP, THCO, or anything like that, probably because you are one of the pros in our Discord, and don't forget to go check that out down in the pinned comment section, by the way, then this particular procedure is going to start to sound really familiar to you as far as mechanics go. Using this step is going to be easier as we can start from THC that has been converted from CBD and allow everything to stay hemp derived for all of those gray areas. Now, this time we will take our one liter of THC oil that we converted from CBD using either aluminum chloride or trisobutyl aluminum. And at this point, our THC oil is well within the 95 percentile range. We want a high purity THC distillate. We want to warm this oil up and place it inside of our boiling flask that is going to have our PTFE magnetic stir bar and obviously our mantle is going to be able to run our stir bar there. We've got our cold water that is hooked up to our Liebig condenser and we also have our vacuum control nipple that is going to be feeding nitrogen from the inside. We always want to make sure that we grease all glass on glass connection. So we will go ahead and warm our oil up and we will set our mantle to about 30 degrees Celsius 
and then we want to homogenize that in a one-to-one -one ratio of either heptane, which is my favorite, or DCM to be allowed as a, uh, used as a solvent to allow the oil to completely dissolve in the carrier solvent. Like I said, in this case, we're gonna use heptane because it is much easier to work with, in my opinion. In our first neck, our middle singular most neck, we will connect a 2440 Liebig condenser that we will hook up to a cold water supply. In our secondary neck, we will keep our temperature probe right down in here. And we want to make sure that the probe never comes into contact with this stir bar because we don't want it to disturb it. So make sure that we always grease that, those connections once again. In our third neck, we will have our vacuum regulator glass nipple that will be connected with a tube to our nitrogen supply. We will do this on the last step because this is also the port and if you wanted to interchange the temperature probe port for the vacuum port, doesn't really matter what you're using here but you're going to want a powder addition funnel to be able to bring um, your next couple things in, in here uh, which is going to be the catalyst that you're going to be using, okay? So, 10% by weight of the oil. So if we put a liter in there, there's approximately 1,000 grams, we're going to be using 10%, or one liter would be 100 milliliters of laboratory grade, reagent grade, artificial gastric juice, comprised of mostly HCl, lipase, and pepsin. So for our one liter reaction here, we're gonna go ahead and want to add 100 milliliters of artificial gastric juice. Now we will make sure that our condensing coil on our Liebig is up to temp remove our addition funnel and plug in our vacuum regulator nipple just to supply around 5 PSI of nitrogen. Now, if you wanted to also put a vacuum regulator nipple up here and put that to a mineral bubbler, a mineral oil bubbler, so that you could constantly monitor and make sure that you've got an adequate supply of nitrogen, it would. I would highly advocate that that is the way to go. Most people have this stuff just hanging around the laboratory already, and that's why I put it in basic concepts where everybody in laboratories all across the world will be able to do this. So we're going to plug in our vacuum regulator nipple, supply that 5 PSI of nitrogen. We will then begin ramping up our boiling flask mantle temperature until we have reached a 70 degrees Celsius or we notice a vigorous reflux on our condensing head. If the level of reflux is ascending over 60% of the condenser, that means that we are either too hot in this mantle and we need to decrease temperature or we are not cold enough in the chilling water. Once the reaction is stable, we will allow this reaction to continue to reflux for five hours. Allow the reaction to then work up to room temperature, remove your oil from the reactionary vessel and into your separatory funnel where we will start to do our liquid to liquid extraction. Now we want to start off with First wash is going to be super saturated brine water. We're going to shake together vigorously and allow the aqueous and the organic phase to separate. Then we are going to do a, wa a wash with citric acid and water. And then we're going to follow up a wash with sodium bicarb and water. And finally, we will wash with three additional distilled water washes or as many distilled water washes are necessary to make sure that we get to a pH of about 6.7 to 7. Now, once we are done with that, we can go ahead and pour our oil into a molecular desiccant where we can absorb all of the water that is probably left over from the LLE, at least a residual a bit of it, and then we can move to our rotary evaporator to recover our heptane and then distill under normal operating Condition. So five, this is your SOP here, five PSI nitrogen supply, one liter of converted THC oil, one liter of heptane, 100 milliliters of artificial gastric juice, 70 degrees Celsius heat to get that reflux, negative 10 at the chilled water to make sure that we never get past the 60 percentile region, 400 RPM stirred, and all of that is going to go for five hours of total time. That is going to allow us to make our own Delta 11 THC. Relatively simple. Now, another way, like I said at the end, that you can make Delta 11 THC naturally in your own body is you can actually just ingest, that's right, eat 
Delta 9 THC oil. Now, a lot of that gastric juice that we just used artificially is going to be present in your stomach, and that is going to convert over into Delta 11 THC and then react with your endocannabinoid system. This is going to be the predominant reason that those edibles that you thought, you know, was maybe it's a certain amount of THC that you're really used to, and then all of a sudden it's an hour later and you're slapped so heavy to the floor you can't even believe what just happened with your life and in some cases creates panic attacks and different things like that because delta 11 thc is going to be very very potent as it reacts with the endocannabinoid system and your body is going to naturally turn some delta 9 thc at a 10 to 20 percentile ratio and that's anatomically dependent on everybody is different obviously but relatively in those in those certain parameters you'll have that conversion and then that will actually react with your endocannabinoid system but by taking it sublingually or eating it you know ingesting it anyway that it gets down into your stomach and your gastrointestinal tract it is going to convert that way as well and that's how you can do it without even needing any of this laboratory but guys this is circulating and is prevalent as a new cannabinoid to hit the market recently so you already know what we're about at WKU is we want to give you all of the knowledge necessary to make sure that you're competing in all avenues of the market go check us out on discord guys drop us a like comment all of that stuff let me know down in the comment section if you're doing this in your laboratory or if you've used delta 11 thc and how it affected you that's all that we have for you guys today it has been a blessing a privilege nay an honor to be able to teach and consult with you guys today we'll see you all in the next video peace